Hi, my name is Bethany and I'm the girl behind Well Loved Knits. I'm so glad you're here because today we're going to be going through all the steps that you need to create my Cozy Mock Neck Sweater. Each part of this video will be covering the different steps that it takes to create the sweater, starting with the front and back panels, and then moving on to the collar and sleeves. So if you haven't already, go ahead and purchase the pattern available in my Etsy, link in the description, and let's get started. To knit this sweater, you'll need the number of skeins for the size best suited to your body. For this project, I'm using Wool in the Gang Crazy Sexy Wool, but of course you can use whatever yarn that you have on hand. Just make sure that you're getting the correct knitting gauge. Gauge? Gauge? I don't know. Gauge. With 15 millimeter and 12 millimeter needles. You'll also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle. So let's talk about the pattern before we get started. You'll notice that the sizes of this sweater range from small to extra large. Small is listed, then medium in parentheses, and so on. This time I'm going to be knitting a size medium, so for every instruction that is tailored by size, I will focus on the second number listed, the first one in parentheses. For example, to know how many skeins I needed to knit size medium, I referenced the first number in the parentheses. So I'm going to be using five skeins of this wool to knit the entire sweater. If you wanted to purchase an alternate wool, you just need to adjust the number of skeins that you will be purchasing. What we need to do is take a look at the weight and the meterage of the recommended yarn. One skein of Wool in the Gang Crazy Sexy Wool is 200 grams, which equals 80 meters. Since the pattern recommends five skeins for a size medium, I can assume that 400 meters of wool is required for this project. So I would take that amount and compare it to the specifications of the alternate yarn I wish to use. Since chunky yarn is pretty expensive, I do actually have a free guide for alternative yarns for knitters on a budget that you can use that's linked in the description. We will need to work both the front and back panels before moving on to other parts of the sweater. In this pattern, the back panel is mentioned first, but you can knit in whichever order you choose. The great news is that the steps for both panels are relatively the same. Cast on the number of stitches for your size on size 12 millimeter or US 17 needles. I'm doing a simple long tail cast on. Once I have the correct number of stitches on my needles, I'll begin working in one by one rib. As you can see here, I don't have much yarn left over from my cast on. Honestly, I was too stubborn to go back, so I just made sure to really hold on to the strand for the first few rows to make sure it wouldn't unravel. But I definitely recommend having a longer tail because it can actually help with seaming the body panels later on. Once I've reached the number of rows listed or even desired, it's time to change needles. For a nice polished look, pay attention to the bottom of your ribbed piece. On one side, there's a nice braid effect, and that's what we'll use as our right side. So that means once I change out my needles, I'll knit this next row. I personally love interchangeable needles, and I recommend them for basically all projects because it's so easy to switch out the needle and keep on working. I'll link some of my personal favorite products I work with in the description. Just uh, connecting this one, it makes it easier to do all this. And now we are on our right side row. So you can see that we have these stitches right here, like this little braid technique. Um, that means we're on our right side row, so we need to knit the next row. So the entire row I'm going to be knitting with one uh, needle as a 12 millimeter and one as a 15, just to make my life a little bit easier so I'm not having a hard time um, moving my stitches off my left needle.
Okay, and once your needles are all switched out, you'll work back and forth in stockinette stitch. And from here on, it's just some meditative knitting until you reach your desired length. Here is just a progress shot of my back panel. I really love how fast this piece works up and you can easily finish one panel in just a few hours. When you think you've made it, double check with a measuring tape. The Cozy Mock Neck sweater is very customizable and if you prefer to lengthen or shorten the body, that's entirely up to you. So once you reach your desired length, you can just cast off for the back. For the front panel, once we reach the correct length, we will continue on to shape the shoulders. Starting with a right side row, we will knit the number of stitches for the left shoulder. Place these stitches on a spare needle or string. I simply take the left needle and insert it behind the right and slip the stitch over. This is done to make sure I don't get any of my stitches twisted in the process. Then cast off the stitches for the neck opening. To cast off, Knit the first two stitches, and then take the first stitch and lift it up, over, and off the needle. Be sure to check the knitting pattern for the correct number of stitches for your size. Then you'll knit across the remaining stitches to start working on the right shoulder. For the decrease of the right shoulder, at the start of the knit row we will knit one and then SSK, which means slip, slip, knit. So you simply slip the next two stitches as if to knit onto your right needle, and then you take your left needle and insert it to the front of the right needle and knit through the back loop. For the left shoulder, start on the outer corner and knit until there are three stitches on your needle. Knit two together and then knit the last stitch. Continue making the decreases as instructed and cast off. Before going any further, I recommend weaving in any loose ends. Here's a little demonstration on how to do it. Before we move on to knit the collar and sleeves, we need to sew together the front and back panels at the sides and the shoulders. I prefer to start at the bottom of the body panels. Feed your darning needle through your string. I'll be using the tail for my cast on to weave in my stitches. If your tail isn't long enough, you can of course use the string from your working yarn. With both panels right side facing up, Insert the needle up through the first body panel to secure it in place. We need to weave this string back and forth between the two panels to sew them together. Between each V you can see a little bar. Insert your needle and pull your yarn through. Same thing on the other side. Identify the V-shapes on the edge of the panel. Insert your needle behind the bar between the next V and pull your yarn through.
Depending on the fiber you're using and the tension of your knitting, this may be a little difficult. I tend to knit more tightly, so you can see I need to be a little forceful with my yarn. Again, to seam the two panels together, identify the V-shapes on the side of the panel. Insert your needle behind the bar between the next V in line and pull your yarn through. Continue back and forth up the sides, leaving an opening for your sleeves. Finally, sew up your shoulder seams. I didn't show it here, but I plan to include it in a beginner series in the very near future. To knit the collar, we will be picking up stitches in the round using 12mm US 17 needles. Insert your needle into the first stitch opening. Wrap your working yarn around your needle and pull back through. Continue this process to pick up stitches along the collar as recommended in the pattern. This process is very similar to my video on how to knit a v-neck so if you're interested in learning more about that, I will be sure to add a card and a link in the description. For the sleeves, the process is very similar. You'll pick up stitches in the round with 15mm needles, but instead you work in stocking stitch the whole way through until you reach the cuff. Here I'm demonstrating the decreases made just before switching to the rib cuff. As I already showed with the neckline decreases, here you'll alternate knitting two stitches together. Once you're done, you'll switch from 15mm to 12mm needles and work in one by one rib. Then you'll cast off in ribbing or your preferred method. Then all you need to do is repeat these steps for the second sleeve. And that's it! I'm so happy to be able to share this making process with you. I'm really happy with the construction of the Cozy Mock Neck Sweater. I feel like it's the perfect staple for your winter wardrobe, and it's such an easy project for first-time knitters. You'll get a taste of all the basic techniques, and progress is so fast because of the chunkier yarn and needles. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you especially if you've purchased this pattern. Purchasing a pattern is a great way to support me to continue to make more designs and knitting content in the future.